Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. This time around, I got something different for you guys. In this video, we're gonna be going through a special project that I have here where I'm going to be installing a component within this airplane that you see there in the back. So let's go ahead and turn the camera around so that we can see exactly what this project entails. What I've essentially done is gone out and purchased three of these A3L version two gyros made by Hobby Eagle. The plan is to take one of these guys, throw it into this L39 free wing plane here and see what it does. Now this would be the first time that I'm using a gyro in an electric jet. I have not used a gyro in the past in any of the electric jets. I think maybe some UMX models. So I do like gyros. I just, I don't know why I have never gotten around to it, but this is what I'm going to make happen. One thing I did want to point out is don't confuse this beautiful plane with the plane that we saw in the last video. The plane that we saw in the last video is owned by Racer 686. He ended up dropping this motor off so we could take a look at it which, uh, you know, this is where this big ball of mess came from. This motor was rock solid seized and it was because of this Kevlar wrap letting go. So that's what happened in the previous video there. This is not the same airplane. So I had to just put that camera down there for a second to go and open up the cockpit. So I got a few plans that I want to do with this particular model. One of them is, is I want to straighten out this mess. This here, this installation, I am just not comfortable with. I don't like all my wires going just about everywhere inside the plane. So the plan for this installation is to first take this blue box here where all the wing wires enter in and then from there it gets separated out and goes to the receiver which you can barely see back there. I want to shove that all the way back there in the plane so that it's well out of the way. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the receiver, I'll see if there's a better spot to put it. If this is not going to be good enough, I might end up putting it down here on that wooden plate somewhere. I don't know if it'll be in this side of the plane or, or what, we'll have to figure that out. And then the idea is to take that gyro and place it right into that area on the wooden plate right there. So that's currently what the plan is, and let's see if I can make that happen. Okay, so we made a little bit of progress. We removed those two screws from that blue box, and I'll show you where the blue box now resides. So if I'm able to get buried all the way in there, you can see the aileron elevator and rudder port on that blue box. That's where it now resides, right on the bottom of the fuselage. Should be quite secure there. I just used some double-sided foam to secure it. And now all I have left to do is hook up the gyro. So if we take a look at the gyro, the gyro has a bunch of lead ports on it. You can see the ports on the end. I'm gonna sit the gyro right here on the wooden block like that in that direction. I'm probably gonna offset it from center. So ideally you'd wanna have it right on the center axes of the airplane. However, I'm gonna use this spot right here just because I'm able to secure it a little bit more rigidly on this chunk of wood. The double-sided foam is gonna have a nice solid surface area right here. So that's how we're gonna secure it. And the ports we're gonna be using today is going to be the aileron, elevator, rudder, and gain port. So that's gonna take four for the input. And then on the output side, you can see on the top, if it focuses, output one through three. Those leads are located right here. This is my rudder lead. And then I have to figure out which of those two leads is going to be my aileron and elevator. The four leads coming off of my receiver. The receiver is now mounted similar spot as before right there on the side. I have four leads that I'm gonna be connecting. Uh, two of them are right here, this guy as well as that guy down there. And then I got another one here and another one over there. There's the aileron. I have to figure out what the rest of them are and then I can go and connect that. So let's get back to work. All right, here we are at the final part for this video. Um, just before we go and show the actual installation of the airplane, I want to show this one item here. So every time you install one of these A3L V2 gyros into your airplane, the kit comes with one of these capacitors. Now the whole idea is that gyros are going to place a greater load on your receiver power 
system there on that circuitry. And for the most part, these circuits operate off of your electronic speed control. It has a Beck circuit built in that feeds a specific amount of power to your radio system. Now, when you install the gyro, you're gonna have higher demands because the aileron, elevator, and rudder are all going to be working more aggressively in the air as it tries to counter any sort of effect that it comes across. A good example would be a kick of wind and it has to react to that. The idea behind the capacitor is it's supposed to help offset those demands in power. So these Capacitors are 3300 microfarad, and a 3300 microfarad really isn't all that much. It's an extremely small amount of power. Typically, capacitors and electronic circuits are designed to help with filtering, but filtering out a power circuit is quite a large ask. So that would make for a great video, and it's probably something that I should put on the list just to go and test since I have quite a few here. So now let's take a look at the installation. The only thing that you have not really seen is where the gyro is mounted. So that's where we said that we're going to place it. That's where it's located. I have a battery connected up here. I'll just disconnect this battery and you can see how everything is laid out. So it took quite a bit of time to go and organize all of the wires as best as I possibly could. I really don't like it when there's so much wires and it's really difficult to kind of keep them all organized. So as you can see, it's better than what it used to look like. It, I guess it doesn't show quite the same on the video. I'm looking at the video right now and I see it just still looks like a big nest of wires. However, it's a little bit further back and it's somewhat along the bottom of the airframe. So this is something that I'm comfortable with and it'll serve the purpose well. So already what I did after installing this gyro is I used a 4S battery just to go through all of the programming, make sure everything is going in the correct direction. After that was confirmed, I should be good to go. And then a bonus update, what I did since I was already heavily involved in, you know, going over everything for this plane is I took a look at the actual servos and they were on one of the outermost holes right here and because of that I was operating on a much lower percentage of travel than I would like. So what I did is I went to an innermost hole and changed my travel within the actual radio, giving myself more resolution. So this is something that I like to do on many of my planes. A lot of guys don't like to operate the plane with a lot of stick travel on the radio. We did a video about this and it's just my personal preference on how I prefer to fly the airplane. Yeah, so that pretty well does it. I hope to include more of these project-based videos in the future whenever I'm doing something for one of my radio control videos vehicles. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.